My name is Jason, and this is Just Watches. Okay, today we have a watch from a brand I was not familiar with before this review. The brand is Delma, and it was actually established in 1933 and continues to be family owned and operated. Now this particular model is the Cayman Field. Before we get to the review, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe, and if you're enjoying the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. For price and availability, at the time of this recording, this watch is currently available on the Delma website for $1,225 on this strap or rubber and $1,425 on a bracelet. This model also comes in quartz for $700. The case is 42 millimeters in diameter, 48.5 millimeters lug to lug, 13.5 millimeters thick, and then has a 22 millimeter lug width opening. On the stock strap, it weighs in at 94 grams. Now the case is primarily brushed with a broad high polished chamfer, and then the high polish is also present on the ends of the gently sloping lugs. The crown and edge of the bezel are also finished in high polish, and this in combination with the high polished hands adds a bit of flash to this field style watch. The lugs are long, but the gentle curve of the lugs and the sub 50 millimeter total lug to lug distance means Means it wears flat and comfortably on my six and three quarters inch wrist. The stock strap starts at 22 millimeters and tapers down to 20 at the tail. The top is a robust yet soft canvas with leather reinforced holes and a comfortable leather backing. The pin and buckle is super solid and uses a combination of brushed and polished surfaces and is adorned with a nice etching of the Delma logo. The strap was immediately comfortable but also feels like it will last a long time. The screw down exhibition case back helps provide a whopping 500 meters of water resistance. The case back is high polish around the edge with information about the watch. The large sapphire window gives a nice view of the custom gold Delma rotor used on the Salida SW200. I really like the gold rotor as it complements a few other gold components of the movement. Now, as mentioned before, this watch is powered by the Salida SW200. This is a hacking, hand-winding, 28,800 vibration per hour movement with a power reserve of 38 hours and a stated accuracy of plus or minus 12 seconds a day. It also features a quick set date. And this one is running extremely well, running about zero to plus one seconds a day with the dial up and then minus one to about minus three with the crown up. The 7mm screw down crown is nicely knurled and signed with the Delma logo. The threading and unthreading action is exceptionally smooth and it is very easy to operate this watch via this larger crown. Despite being on the larger side, I think it looks right at home on this watch and I really love the ease of use with a larger crown. The domed sapphire crystal is just a touch proud of the bezel. It is treated with anti-reflective coating, which seems to do a decent job on this domed crystal. The dome also creates some very cool visual distortions when viewing the watch on an angle, and because it's deeply set, does not add thickness to the watch overall. The 120 click unidirectional bezel has a nice, consistent, ratchety action with no backplay. The loom pip at 12 also lines up very nicely. The insert is anodized aluminum with markings for every minute, and then Arabic numerals for 15, 30, and 45. The bezel is quite thin and leaves plenty of room for this expansive dial. It is an interesting inclusion on this field style watch, but I love the added functionality of being able to time things with the bezel. The dial on this watch is a matte black. Starting at the very edge of the dial, we have dashes for each of the minutes, and then and moving in, we have 12, 6, and 9 in Arabic numerals with a beveled and framed date window at 3, and then dashes round out the rest of the hour positions, and then all of these are loomed. Moving in again, we have military time in a reddish orange. This color is also used to frame the date window. Finally, the Delma logo and Delma reside at 12, with automatic and the depth threading at 6, and Swiss made flanking the 6 o'clock position. This dial is very legible, and I love the playful use of this reddish orange color. The baton, hour, and minute hands are high polish, gabled down the center, and filled with loom. The hour and minute hand are plenty long, with the minute hand reaching all the way out to the dashes around the edge of the dial. The second hand has a short counterbalance and a loomed arrow at the end, and is also very long. However, I'm not sure I'm fully on board with this high polish finish on the handset. I think it makes the watch slightly harder to read overall, and feels a bit out of sorts on this otherwise very toolish field style watch. The loom starts out quite strong, but does fade relative to the Seiko on the left. It also fades a little bit inconsistently. The loom on the indices dies before the loom on the hands. And here is the watch on my six and three quarters inch wrist. The slight curve in the lugs definitely helps with the wear, and it was comfortable on my wrist. For pros and cons, let's start with the pros. 
Well, this watch is kind of a spec monster. It has all the bells and whistles, such as a screw down crown, 500 meters of water resistance, a sapphire crystal with AR coating on the front, a sapphire crystal on the back, etc., etc. I also really like the large crown they used here. It has a very buttery smooth action. The dial is very legible, and then the bezel has a very good action on it as well. For cons, I only have two, one minor and one major. The minor one is that I'm not sure I'm a fan of the high polished handset. I feel it's just a bit out of touch on this watch overall. And then the major con is that this watch is fairly expensive at $1,225 and that doesn't include a bracelet. Now you can get a bracelet version, but it adds to the cost. And at $1,200, we're already in a very competitive price point. So you're really gonna have to be drawn to the specific styling of this particular watch, I think to justify over some of its competition. For comparables, well, when I think of field watches, I do think of Hamilton. At around half the price of this Delma, you could pick up the Khaki Field Mechanical, which has many of the same features, such as a Sapphire Crystal and Swiss Movement. For around the same price, you could nab an ETA-powered Damasco DS30, which I have a review of on my channel, and I'll pop a link to that review in the upper right-hand corner now. Finally, if you like the bezel and don't mind spending a bit more, you could consider something like the Ares Mission Timer, which is also a bit of a hybrid diver and field watch. So there you have it, the Delma Cayman Field. What do you think about this watch? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason, and you have been watching Just Watches.